Welcome in everyone to the Larson Land podcast. I'm your host Sawyer Hill, and I'm joined as always by my co-host Dylan Bradshaw. We come in here every single week and talk about all things involving the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series champion, Young Money Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson made his return to the Pauline Davis Pavilion on Saturday night with the Red Bluff Outlaws. Uh, some some racing action to talk about. A little unexpected there. We didn't expect Kyle to be there, Dylan. But uh, before we get to that, man, it's been a while since I've seen you. The last two podcasts had to do them solo, talking about the midget stuff out in California. But uh, good to have you back. Uh, you you had a little out, trip out to watch the Auburn game. You got the Auburn jacket on now. You got the cozy Christmas tree in the background. How you doing, man? Yeah, uh, you know, good to be back. It, it definitely has been a while. Um, you know, off season, not too much racing to cover, but yeah, I mean, those two podcasts I missed. It was it was fun being in Alabama. Um, for for those that watch college football, just it, it, just crazy Iron Bowl game. Not not how I expected to finish at all, but uh, yeah, we're, we're we're hoping for a better better year next year. If if any Auburn fans out there, uh, be sure to comment below. But um, yeah, it was a fun time. Glad to be back. Christmas time. Got the Christmas tree in the back, as you see. Um, you know, Merry Christmas to everyone out there. I don't I don't think we'll have a, another podcast for a while till till January during the, the Vado Racing Week in the late model. But uh, yeah, Merry Christmas to everyone out there. And, and, you know, good to have a podcast back. Absolutely. Um, any chance we can get to, to come on here and, and talk about some racing. It's it's a good day. So, uh, Kyle again out was out at the Red Bluff Outlaws on Saturday night. Uh, actually doing double duty. A little bit of a busy night for him. I don't think when the original announcement came out, not everybody knew he was going to be running double duty. Um, Kyle's mom, Janet, actually gave me a little tip off on that one. So we might have actually been the first people to kind of leak that that uh second cart deal for Kyle. But um, it was cool to watch. I think we as like East coasters, we don't get to see much outlaw cart racing or really tune into it much other than opportunities like this, uh, fast forward media with the coverage, $20 for one night, pretty good deal there. So we went ahead and purchased it and Dylan, uh, it was a wild night or a wild day. I should say to say the least it was, uh, it was a long one, but, uh, some, some, some interesting racing, getting to see something a little bit different. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, twenty dollars for what was it? Ten hours. I mean, that that is the longest stretch of racing that you know I've been through. I mean, it's just so many divisions of cars. Just and it, it was pretty back to back too. There really wasn't very many breaks. Yeah, they ran I mean, a good was, show. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, the I think the longest break was before you know they did the the main events at near the end. But I mean, it was just back to back to back. Just so much to keep up with. You know, Owen was was racing as well, so keeping up with him a little bit there. Um, you know, Kyle, like we, we mentioned cage clones and the, the 500 open cars, but, um, it was a wild one. I mean, cage clones, he ended up, you know, pre- pretty much easing through. I mean, he started fourth in the main event, finished second, um, a li- little bit of shake and bake action there at the <laughs> end. So w- with him and Copeland, so pretty cool to see. And then, um, the 500 open, that was definitely, you know, kind, kind of a treat to watch. I mean, in his heat race. Um, you know, there was a huge in-track incident that collected, like, every car but four cars in the opening laps. Larson was amongst them. Um, um, another incident happened. I, I think I missed it, but I looked up and I saw Larson like, just kind of putting around the track. So I don't know if he, you know, got into someone or what. But after that, he pulled off the, um, the track with three to go, um, started on the pole in the D main, won that, went to the C main, barely grabbed the final transfer spot, got sixth. 16th in the B main, finished sixth, grabbed the final chance for spot. So, um, I mean, you, you threw out a tweet. He just completely went through the alphabet soup, hit every single letter. Um, but yeah, he transferred into the A main, started last, and um, you know he, he brought it home six. So I thought he I thought he was on a roll there in, in the main event. I thought he you know he could have pulled something out. I think around like 15 to 20 to go. I, I thought he was going to bring it you know in the top five fairly soon, but. Um, he ended up getting six, which is which is pretty impressive. He ended up having 25 overtakes in that race, which is crazy. They gave him like the the passing master title for that race, but yeah, it was pretty cool. The the 500 open cars are you know f- fairly quick to go around that little track. It's kind of cool to see, and uh, yeah, it was a pretty cool event. Yeah, and and to to speak on the point of Kyle just making the race, I think I, I saw I saw a lot of people. I don't know if it was kind of like 
people that are, are are used to are like locals to the area like watching re like racing at red bluff but a lot of people were saying on facebook that c they didn't even think kyle was gonna make the feature event so um and kyle said it himself like his goal was not even just to win the race he wanted to just make that that main event so uh he accomplished that obviously it it was in a insane fashion having to come through the the d main to get there but honestly even i didn't think kyle was going to be able to do that the the b main was down right to the last couple laps i think it might have been the last lap or two to come into the two to go he took that sixth and final transfer spot uh to get into the a main so uh tons of drama in, in that division well, like you said once kyle kind of got up to tanner holmes in the feature that was kind of where he stopped making progress. The, Tanner's a good driver. I mean, ran with, with the World of Outlaws last year uh, for a stint in the Shark Racing 1A car. And not sure what his plans are for 2024, but um, there were some good drivers out there. And again, like Colby Copeland and the Cage Clones, like he's a he's a good driver as well, one of Kyle's good friends. And it was, it was cool to see him kind of shake and bake, like you said, push him to the win. Uh, over Dominic Gordon in that one, who Dominic Gordon really had the dominant cart that entire race. Kyle and Colby really competed for second the entire race up until that last restart in the cage clones. So uh, that was a cool one. They kind of fist bumped going down off the uh, track, leaving that uh, that race. So cool, cool action out there at Red Bluff. Definitely something uh, I would love to see in person if I ever got the chance to to be there and, and go and see it but a long day to say the least for race fans watching on the east coast yeah it's cool to see i mean I, i'm sure we'll see him again at some point um you know probably probably would be a while i'm not sure you know how often they run that but um you know he has his, he has his own 1k car and then he ran that the 19 moms car which is pretty funny to see on my race pass just seeing 19 moms go across there which we obviously mentioned he was a fill-in for, but yeah, I'm sure we'll see him in and again. Um, he, he's he's probably hungry to get that 500 open win for the first time. So um, yeah, I'm sure we'll see him, you know, compete in Red Bluff again. Yeah, I'm not sure who the like original driver is on that 19 mom cart, but I'm pretty sure that is that's Kyle's dad, uh, Mike Larson. I'm pretty sure that's his cart. So uh, whoever drives that, I, I'm not sure that that's a uh, drives that cart for Kyle's dad. So kind of cool there. It had Kyle's kind of original like paint scheme, throwback paint scheme on it. So that was, that was kind of cool to see as well, but um, cool stuff for sure out there at red bluff Dylan. But uh, we got some new stuff on Larson land here. I'm going to pull it up on the screen for the people watching on YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, memberships. So, we have some some memberships available for our supporters on YouTube. An awesome way not only to support our channel and provide a, uh, help us provide the content that everybody enjoys across all of our social media platforms, but also the ability to, to gain access to some really cool member-only perks. So as you see laid out here on the screen, and if you're watching on Apple Podcasts, uh, we do encourage you to come check this out on YouTube uh, on the screen right now. But we have three three main tiers for everybody, uh, a bronze tier, a silver, and a gold. The bronze at $3.99 a month, silver at $14.99 a month, and gold at $99.99 a month. With the bronze tier, you uh, gain access to loyalty badges next to your name in, in comments, in the comment section down below of like a video like this, or in a live chat if we were having a live stream. I'll uh, put on the screen now in the top left the, the what the loyalty badge looks like. It's a little checkered flag with a ladybug right now. That might change up a little bit. But we also have two emojis currently that you could use as a member, which which are pretty cool. We have the ladybug, the Larson ladybug, and then our Larson Land logo, obviously. Um, if you do become a member, really any of these tiers, you will get member shout outs on the video on uh, every single podcast, on every single podcast on YouTube. So your name will come up on the screen uh, on every podcast in like the top left or right or something like that. And then we are planning on having some members only live streams, Dylan, uh, maybe during some races, kind of cool stuff there. Uh, 
anything you got to say about the bronze tier here? Yeah, I mean, bronze, it, it's just pretty basic, uh, you know, basic stuff. It, it's cool. And we, we just kind of want to stress that, you know, it, it's it's not so much as, you know, the, the perks that come with it. it. It's, you know, supporting the podcast, you know, obviously don't feel pressure to do so. I mean, we we for those that saw it, we, we rolled out a little subscriber thing on Facebook and, you know, it kind of seemed a little overwhelming to some people. You're not pressured to make it. You know, Larson Land is, is completely free content. We're still going to be posting the podcast as normal. So, you know, don't feel too pressured, but, um, you know, it, it's just your way to support. And then, you know, along with that, you get these perks, you know, silver tier. That includes all the things Sawyer just mentioned from the bronze tier, plus members only chat room. So, um, we're going to set up a Discord server, a Larsenland Discord server. Those not familiar, it's just kind of a, a server. It has a, you know, a, a text channel where you can chat with other members. Um, and has a voice channel, which that's actually what we use to, you know, record these podcasts. So everyone can talk to one another. Um, in the silver tier, also a monthly Larsenland sticker slash decal. So each month you'll receive a, a new Larsenland podcast sticker shipped to you. Pretty cool. Going to make up, you know, some some different designs with that. Um, kind of a, a cool perk in that package. And then we, we've talked about it last year. It's it, We've added this in one of the perks for Silver this year, um, a chance to call into the podcast. So, you know, how, how radio shows kind of have like call-in members, you know, giving their, their opinion on something happening, um, kind of a same same work, you know, situation on, on some podcasts. You know, we might contact some members on Discord, drag them in the server. They can kind of speak their mind on a topic or, you know, just, just bring them in the server. So... Yeah, just just some some really cool perks. And, you know, like I said, don't feel pressured, but we'd really support it, you know, or, you know, appreciate it. You know, we put in a lot of time, a lot of effort with Larson Land. So um, it, it's just kind of a, a way to show your, your appreciation. Absolutely. I mean, uh, a, definitely a cool way to, to show your appreciation. I mean, like Dylan said, we're not pressuring anybody into these subscriptions, but we do want to make them so they're they're worth your while. You know, if you do want to, help us and, and help our content out through the course of the year. I mean, we put a lot of effort into um, everything across, uh, along the, the course of the year. I mean, people people on Facebook were kind of commenting about our, our 99 cent subscription thing on there saying, oh, you guys aren't forced to do this. Like, no, we're not forced to do it, but we do invest a lot of time and it's not free everything we do. I mean, we don't we, the, we make the graphics and obviously that costs money and our time to make up every graphic we make and for us to spend our time to go out to the different events I mean I think we I think I went to 15 different events in 2023 so a lot of a lot of action that we are able to to cover so uh just a little bit helps and if you don't have the the means to do it that's okay but if you'd love to help I mean hey we're we, we definitely would appreciate it um, and then the final tier of subscription is the gold tier. This is ninety nine ninety nine a month. Uh, definitely uh, a big big supporter, a big support that it would be for you to for to pay that, even if it was just for a month. I mean, we would really appreciate that. But we are adding in a really exclusive perk to that tier: the monthly Larson Land merch drop. I know a lot of people have requested T shirts. Uh, hats, any type of accessories with Larson Land on it. We aren't currently selling anything like that on like an online store. So really, this is your only place where you could find something like that, where you could get a t-shirt that says Larson Land on it potentially. Each month, there will be a different type of item. So it's not always going to be a t-shirt. Uh, one month, it could be a shirt. The next month, it could be a hat. The next month, it could be a, a backpack or something like that. So it, it could, could alternate and switch up and... We're, we're trying to plan out some cool things for that. And those are, th we want that to be something that's very exclusive and, and something that would, would mean a lot for that person to have that item uh, as well as their support for us. Yeah. I know when you were talking about it, I mean, just, just kind of going off of that, a ton of people, you know, where's the large land shirts? Where, where's this? Where's that? Cause I mean, we go to our racetrack and, you know, people see the large land shirt, they come up, say, Hey, whatever. So, I mean, kind of the same thing. Like we go to our racetrack and it'd be pretty cool to see, you know, large land merch someone else has and see yeah. like, realize that, Hey, you're, you're a, you know, big time supporter of the, of the show, you know, of the pages, what we do, you know, thank them. We really appreciate it. And just kind of a, kind of a cool thing. So, um, yeah, it, it, I mean, it's pretty easy to, to sign up if you're interested. You just go to the YouTube channel, 
Um, you know, you can kind of see it on the graphic that, that Sawyer had pulled up. There's a subscribe button, and then right next to that, there's a join button. Join is how you access all of this. Um, that YouTube, it actually shows pretty much the same thing, what we ran through, you know, breaking down the different tiers and, you know, what's included. And uh, you just join, you know, add a, add a payment method, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, um, you know. As we as we keep stressing, you know, it's it's really appreciated if you do, but you know, don't feel pressured. But um, it's it's just kind of our way to you know add some stuff to the page, you know, branch out a little bit, um, you know, make some changes, make some improvements to the show. I know we we plan on you know keep improving the podcast, you know, maybe change the you know layout of it next year, twenty twenty four, maybe add like some some more stuff, and this is kind of a a way to contribute to that. So um, cool stuff, excited for it. Um, you know, just just really excited for the stuff we have to plan next year. Yeah, and, and also I think it's important to note too, like your money that you're spending if you're doing this is going towards making the experience better for you and for all of our like supporters. We're not we're not in this to to pocket a bunch of money. We're in this to to provide a really cool social media experience for everybody, and this helps us get out to different races or uh different events to cover them really and that's that's what it's all about i mean the better more times we can get out to the track the better coverage we can have and uh that's that's better for for you as a supporter so um i'm definitely the thing i'm probably looking most forward to is the monthly stickers and or like decals on the silver tier that's going to be cool to make up some different ones. I know I always love when I'm at the racetrack, seeing the stickers on the back of everybody's cars, like the different car numbers. And you can kind of tell like, Oh, there's a, there's a, there's another Larson fan right there. They got a 57 on the back or, or a six or whatever it is. You can kind of see that. So it would be cool to like go to the racetrack and see you guys have some of those exclusive Larson land stickers on the back of your cars. Uh, when we go out to some races this year. So, Enough about the subscriptions, Dylan, or the uh, uh, memberships, I should say. We would appreciate it if you do, but definitely no pressure there. Let's move on to uh, some more racing racing talk here. The, the High Limit Sprint Car Series uh, has been hot and heavy with some announcements over the course of the past couple of weeks. We've seen the schedule come out. We've seen a ton of full-time drivers uh, released for that. All of the schedules really released for all the major series. What are you looking most forward to in 2024 when it comes to events or races or or drivers or what what are you looking at when it comes to 2024? Well, you know, initially looking at the schedule, I'm I'm kind of most excited for the beginning because you know I I don't get to see too many dirt races here in Florida too much anymore. You know, it's it's more of a you know up north thing, but. Starting out of East Bay, um, then Gold Niles in Georgia. Gold Niles is like about an hour and a half for me. I, I think you're going to that, and I'll probably yeah. hit that as well because, I mean, it's just so close. You have to. And um, never been to a high limit event yet, so really looking forward to that. But, you know, other than that, there's some really interesting tracks there. I mean, there's some a lot of big money ones. Um, you know, there's just so many races. There's a lot of tracks on here that I, I was talking about with you. I mean, I've just never even heard of. So, I mean, Arkansas tracks, Texarkana 67 um rpm speedway in texas so there's some different tracks that i've never even seen or heard of i don't know if anyone else has i'm sure but um that's gonna be pretty cool to watch you know different tracks that you know you're, you're not used to seeing um you know not not a track that you're seeing with world of outlaws or high limit or all stars so um that's a cool thing but yeah i mean a lot, a lot of tracks that i love to see kokomo um grandview again uh eagle raceway that was just such a cool event last year with high limit or this year i should say um that's a 50k event um so yeah you know a lot of cool tracks a lot of port royal races you got three port royal races in a row on a thursday friday and saturday in september the final one being 57k payout um you know eldora 100k event so just so many events um just a ton of racing to watch obviously larson isn't going to be full time in that i mean it's just so many races you can't with nascar but um i'm sure he'll he'll definitely you know be be a part of the marquee events in there and there's some you know you mentioned some some big full time high limit drivers brent marks amongst the one that you know ju- just committed full time rico abreu um obviously brad sweet he's doing he's done with outlaw full time so a lot of a lot of big name guys are going to be competing. I mean, you still have 
guys like Parker Price Miller, uh, Casey Kane committed, Spencer Bates, and Jacob Allen, so Corey Day. Um, so there's a lot of big guys, but I would say, you know, amongst those that have committed so far, championship race, I mean, Rico, him and Larson went head to head at this year's. Um, Mark's sweet. So I think it's going to be, be amongst those three, Mark Sweet and Abreu. Um, I, I think, I think those three are going to, going to be the ones, you know, fighting for the championship. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you there with those, those three, but, um, I don't, I don't think we should count out like, I mean, Zeb Wise, Zeb Wise, the, the, the all-stars champion from, from 2023. I mean, he's, he's full-time high limit as well. I think he could be a very competitive guy. I mean, we still don't know what Tyler Courtney's doing yet in 2024. He hasn't announced which way he's going to go, but, um, if he's, if he's high limit, he's going to be another guy that's going to be taking two Brad for that championship. So I think Rico Abreu is probably the the favorite to win over Brad Sweet in the in the uh, championship there in high limit. But Brett Marks, I mean, he's 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 tough to go against. I mean, we saw him in person quite a bit in Pennsylvania uh, two years ago, and saw the the dominance of of him really in 2021 or 2022. I should say this year wasn't as dominant of a year for him, but he's super good. I think I'm just honestly surprised, not surprised that they got this many drivers to go on full time, but uh, just just some of the names. I mean, some of these guys are surprises to see go over to the High Limit Sprint Car Series. I mean, Jacob Allen, I didn't see that one coming much. Uh, I know he didn't finish off the season with the World of Outlaws, but he's that's kind of a surprise that shark racing is going to split up and Jacob's going to run the high limit side. And then Logan's going to stay on the, on the world of outlaws tour. Uh, Casey Kane. I didn't, I didn't expect him to run a full time series this year after, after last year, not really running full time Spencer Baston. That's a huge surprise for me. Seeing him jump over from, from the outlaws over to high limit. So Things looking really different in the sprint car landscape for 2024. The outlaw schedule looks c- kind of different as a result of all of this. A lot of tracks that had outlaw events are now having high limit events. So out- the outlaws are having to go to some different tracks and switch up their schedule. So their schedule looks completely different in 2024. So I think it's it's going to be interesting. 2024 is going to be a, a really cool year for sprint car racing. And again, these high limit guys, they can go and run whatever they want. So they can go and run all of the marquee uh, World of Outlaws events while being full-time high rollers and just really make a pretty penny. I mean, Rico is one of those drivers that he, he's been running a pick-and-choose schedule for his entire career and he still really, in my opinion, gets to do a pick and choose schedule while while running a a sixty plus race full time series. Yeah, it's it's definitely crazy. I mean, I'm excited to see you know what other drivers will come in. I mean, we have it's only December 18th. We have till February to to the you know for, first race kicks off. So I'm sure there's gonna be some more names. Um, I, I wonder if someone like Buddy Kofoid would would maybe make the list. I think that'd be kind of an interesting name to yeah. you know add on full time. I was thinking about him the other day, actually. Like it's it's been kind of quiet on the on the Buddy Kofoid front, like in terms of news. There's been a lot of buzz around like other guy, other young guys like Corey Day and what he's doing, like running full time high limit. But I was I'm definitely kind of like I'm interested to see what happens there with with Buddy and and Tyler Courtney. I mean, those are the two that I'm really looking at. Where it's like those are two heavy hitters that haven't announced their plans for 2024. And I think you could also kind of throw. Carson Macedo into that too. I don't know if Macedo has announced that he which way he's going yet. So if Macedo jumped over to high limit, that would be that would be a huge move, a huge shift because um, I think he would almost be one of those guys where you would say he would he would have a chance of beating Brad in the championship there. And if you look at the outlaw side of things from that perspective, who's going to take to David Gravel for the championship there if Carson Macedo is not uh, running the outlaws? Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to say that. I mean, it's it's sweet gravel and Macedo. So, I mean, you, you take sweet out of the equation, gravel's kind of the, the one to beat. So, it's going to be interesting. I mean, we're, we're already kind of looking at it with, with these commitments, you know, how the head-to-head is going to go between Outlaws and High Limit. Um, you know, I, I think depending on how this 2024 goes, it's kind of going to be, 
you know, the, the, the trial run, maybe we'll see a lot more full-time outlaws commit to it. Schedule is probably going to get even bigger, keep getting bigger and bigger to that point of, you know, being the premier event world of outlaws and, um, you know, beating out world of outlaws, I should say. So I don't know, high limit. It's definitely for big things. This being its second year and they're already like doing this much is crazy. But, you know, having guys like, you know, Kyle Larson, Brad Sweet running it, you know, guys behind the scenes, um, you know, JP always helping out with it, Walkopedia running everything. So all those guys, I mean, just putting putting all the hard work into high limit. Um, it's it's definitely shaped out to be really cool and a really cool series to have. And I'm excited for the for the future of it. Yeah, it's 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 going to be a, a very interesting 2024, to, to say the least. I know I plan on being at East Bay for the first two nights of High Limit action there and then uh, going on to Golden Isle for the two nights there, which is really cool as well because that's a that's a Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series show as well. So a double header there, Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series and the High Limit Racing both uh, on the same weekend. Can't really ask for much more than that as a race fan, uh, much less at, at Golden Isle Speedway. I mean, that track, I've been there the past two years and it is an insane facility. Uh, the grandstands there are just awesome. So can't say enough about that, that facility. If you're in the Florida, Georgia area, make sure you go out and support that event. That is going to be a big one there in February. Uh, and I think we'll probably both be there. So if you want to stop and say hi to the, to the, to the Larson land gang, just, uh, just going out there to gold Nile. So, um, Next up for Kyle Larson confirmed is the Wild West shootout at the Vado Speedway Park in New Mexico. That's going to be uh, starting in the, the end of the first week of January. And uh, a couple, I think it's what, like six or seven nights of action there. So looking forward to that. We don't have anything else uh, before then, so I don't expect we'll have any other podcast episodes until we get to Vado or, or right after uh, a couple of nights of action kick off there. We're we're trying really hard to get some guests on the podcast, Dylan. I, I know we we uh, have been talking about it for probably a month now about how we, we want to get some guests on here. We we have some in the works. Some another pit crew member, not gonna say uh, any names, not gonna leak anything yet. But we have another pit crew member that we're gonna try and get on the podcast. We're gonna try and get Blaine Anderson back on the podcast for another episode before the NASCAR season kicks off, and then uh, maybe a really special guest too. So, um, wink, and, wink. Nudge, anything, nudge. anything else to add to that, Dylan? No, just just you know, really excited. Uh, just a little little tidbit since you're mentioning the the crew members. I told you earlier. Um, the five team engineer Adam Wall. He actually uh, left the five team. He he went to crew chief at Junior Motorsports for Sammy Smith, who's now going to be in the eight car. So, congrats to him. Really big achievement to you know move on to be a crew chief, um, especially at such an elite program like JRM in the Xfinity Series. So, congrats to him. I, I wonder who's gonna you know fill his role to be to be determined, I guess. But um, you know, he, he's been a big part of the five team, you know, through the championship run and everything for, you know, since, since Kyle Larson's, you know, been, been in the five car. So, um, kind of, a, kind of a, a sad, a sad thing. Cause he's just been such a big contributor, but, um, yeah, can, congrats to him moving on to, uh, bigger things being a crew chief. Yeah, for sure. Uh, those, those engineers and, and guys behind the scenes, we know how much of a integral role that they play on, on race day and, and leading up to the race days. But those are the guys that aren't highlighted enough. I mean, we know we we that's the kind of guys that we want to have on the podcast and really showcase what what they do and how much they mean and how much they contribute to a, to a race day and what it puts towards a building that championship season that a, that a race team has to put together. So, um, looking forward to having some more five team pit crew members on the podcast here in the coming weeks or, or months uh thanks again everyone for tuning in and listening to today's show we'll be back hopefully before vado but if not we'll be back to recap the first couple of nights of action at the wild west shootout uh hope you guys have a, a very merry christmas a happy new year's thank you for all of your support again in 2023 it's been an awesome year for larson land if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please follow our podcast so you do not miss a thing. Have a great rest of the week, everyone, and we will see you in the next episode.